In a previous video, we learned that we could calculate the free energy change for a system or reaction based on the enthalpy and the entropy change for that reaction. In this example, we're asked to determine if a particular reaction is spontaneous at 25 degrees Celsius and also to calculate the free energy change for this reaction. This particular reaction involves C2H4 gas reacting with hydrogen gas to produce C2H6 gas. We're given the information that the enthalpy change for this reaction is negative 137.5 kilojoules and the entropy change for the reaction is negative 120.5 joules per Kelvin. We begin this reaction by recalling that the change in the free energy can be found by taking the enthalpy change for the reaction and subtracting the Kelvin temperature times the entropy change for the reaction. Since the free energy change and the enthalpy change will be in kilojoules, we'll need to convert the entropy change from joules per Kelvin to kilojoules per Kelvin. When we identify each of the three units or variables we need for this reaction, we know that the enthalpy change is negative 137.5 kilojoules, the en entropy change is negative 120.5 joules per Kelvin, or when we convert it, negative 0.1205 kilojoules per Kelvin. The temperature is 25.0 degrees Celsius, or when we convert it to Kelvin, it's 298.2 Kelvin. We can now plug in the values to our equation. So we get delta G equals minus 137.5 kilojoules minus 298.2 Kelvin times a negative 0.1205 kilojoules per Kelvin. So this is negative 137.5 kilojoules minus a negative 35.93 kilojoules. And this tells us that the free energy change is negative 101.6 kilojoules. Since the free energy change is negative or less than zero, this indicates that this reaction is spontaneous at 25.0 degrees Celsius. In the previous slide, we saw that this particular reaction was spontaneous at 25.0 degrees Celsius. But is this reaction spontaneous at all temperatures? As we did in a previous video, we can use the signs of the enthalpy change and the entropy change to determine when this reaction will be spontaneous. We start with the equation delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. The delta H term is negative and the delta S is also negative. The negative T delta S term will be positive so now we have a situation in which the delta H term is negative and the T delta S term is positive. So which of these will indicate the sign of the delta G? As with a previous example, when we have opposite signs for the two terms, we need to consider the temperature. In this case, the system will be spontaneous when we have a low temperature. So therefore, this reaction will be spontaneous or have a negative value for the free energy change whenever the T delta S term is small at relatively low temperatures. In the previous slide, we saw that this reaction is going to be spontaneous at low temperatures and therefore non-spontaneous at high temperatures. But when we use terms such as low and high temperature, what does that really mean? We can answer that by asking at what temperature this reaction transitions from spontaneous to non-spontaneous. Since spontaneity is based on the sign of delta G, the temperature at which it changes from spontaneous to non-spontaneous is the temperature when delta G is equal to zero. We could substitute this into our equation, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, so that we have zero equals delta H minus T delta S. We can separate the terms by rearranging the equation, so T delta S is equal to delta H, and then if we solve for T, we find that T is equal to delta H divided by delta S. When we plug in the values for the enthalpy change and the entropy change, we get negative 137.5 kilojoules divided by negative 0.1205 kilojoules per Kelvin, and we find that the temperature at which it changes from spontaneous to non-spontaneous is 1,141 Kelvin, 868.1 degrees Celsius. What this means is this reaction is going to be non-spontaneous 
once the temperature reaches 1141 Kelvin. After watching this video, you should be able to use the enthalpy change, entropy change, and temperature values to calculate the value of a free energy change. In addition, for processes in which the sign of the delta G is dependent on the temperature, you should be able to calculate the temperature which determines when the sign switches from a negative to a positive free energy change.